All right. Hi, everybody. So this video is uh, going to cover every page of the traffic acquisition section. Um, it's all about functionality, primarily. It is not about how to use UTM parameters. It's not about how to interpret them because you, in order to interpret them, you have to understand them. So there's, if you are someone who is a power user of UTM parameters and you um, have adopted them and integrated them throughout your entire marketing strategy, you're gonna get a massive amount of value out of this. If you're not, um, it's just simply not going to be as valuable and it's going to be anywhere in between based on your adoption of UTM parameters across all of your traffic sources. So it's one of the things that I strongly, strongly recommend because when you're able to proactively optimize your traffic, you can see massive gains in terms of revenue, uh, massive reductions in terms of expenses and exponential gains in terms of profit. So that being said, let's just hop into it. Um, the first thing that I want to call your attention to is this page. This is just a, a snapshot page. It provides you with a high-level overview of what traffic sources are generating revenue. And then we have an associated comparison metric, which could compare the revenue to the prior time period. So as a for instance, let's take uh, Google Organic as a for instance. Generated $30,000 in revenue over the last 28 days, because that's what the default is on this particular um, date range selector. You can change that, but let's just look at it from a 28 day, uh, last 28 day range, last 28 day perspective. This, what this is saying is that we generated $30,000 in revenue from Google Organic, and that was an increase of 12% over the prior 28 days. So same thing with all of these um, individual scorecards. If there is a traffic source that you don't see here, a traffic source medium that you don't see here, please let me know. I'm happy to add it on because if you have that question, chances are somebody else does too. I've just selected uh, 10 common ones. And again, we can build this and build it out over time. This is the grand total for all the revenue across all traffic sources. It's up 2% from the prior period. Uh, let's see. The other thing I want to point out is the conditional formatting on these. So anything in red is a reduction. Anything in green in terms of the comparison metric is an increase. So you can quickly come in and just scan without even looking at the values to see, hey, am I trending up or down? Uh, then we get into these pages of the report. So KPIs, this page of the report and this page of the report are virtually the same. And this page of the report, the engagement and this first user's engagement are essentially the same. And then down here, we have the default channel KPIs. All right, so let's just start with right at the top. So for these five pages, there is one clickable link that brings you over to definitions, okay? And that will load a Google Doc that I've created to answer questions around the dimensions and metrics that make up this report. The reason that I've created this is because Learning GA4 is like learning a whole new language from a lot of respects. And um, if you have questions in terms of what does something mean, just click that link and it'll bring you right over. You'll see there are several sections, UTM parameters, engagement metrics for the engagement report, uh, users, and channels. Okay, so when we're down here and we're on the KPI page, the functionality on this page is going to be the same as the other. So I'm just going to use this page as a, as a demo. Um, first thing is, is that we have session source medium campaign term and content all in tables. So this is, these tables are breaking up your traffic, your UTM parameters in terms of um, the, 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 specific parameter that is being sent through. So as a, for instance, we have the source and medium for Google Organic, the source and medium for Google CPC. These are the results that each one of these traffic sources and mediums generated. Google Organic generated $30,000 in revenue. When we come down here, we can see the campaigns on, an, on a gross aggregate set, uh, uh, scale across all traffic sources. These are all the campaigns that are listed. Now this can be kind of hard to analyze, okay, when it's all in aggregate like this and it's all just, you know, rolled up and it shows everything. 
So what you can do when you start asking specific questions, and I'm just going to go along the, the along the Google Google vein, is you can then use filters and you can use these tables in terms of how, how do you interact with these in order to answer specific questions around what's working and what's not. Because that's the question that you really got to be asking yourself. Because when you know what's working, you can spend more and scale that traffic. And when you know what's not working by examining these tables, you can either cut it or you can work to improve it. So the first thing that I would do if I'm going to ask, if I'm going to attempt to answer that question, how is my Google traffic working? I can do a couple things. So I can come in here and I can look at it, right? But then again, all this stuff in terms of campaign term and content is all blended in. So I, I want to break it out. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click on this drop down filter. And I'm just going to, I see the Google right here, the Google name, and I'm just going to click on only. And then automatically, all the tables are sorted for only Google traffic. Now that's split up across Google Organic and Google P CPC. And then we can see down here that the campaigns are still blended. We've got the organic campaign, which is the way organic comes through in the terms of a UTM parameter. Um, but then we also have all these other ones, which are associated with CPC, as I'll show you. Now, one other thing to point out, is that the revenue went from about 144.8, if I'm not mistaken, down to 38. And we can see that this all lines up as we go all the way down through all these tables, okay? Now, if I wanna look at just Google CPC traffic and filter those t the, the, the following tables below for just Google CPC traffic, I can do two different things. First thing is I can come in here and I can just click only, or I can also come in here and I can click right here in the table and then everything will filter. So now you'll see that this is highlighted as 8,800 and then we come down here 8,800, 8,800, 8,800. So now we've filtered only for Google CPC traffic. So when I am looking, and I'm just gonna move my picture up here. When I'm looking at the campaigns, I'm just looking at Google campaigns. And that's very powerful in terms of speed, agility, you know, time to answer your questions. It's it's just invaluable to be able to filter very quickly like that. Um, in terms of device category, I can filter further. And I, let's just say I just want to look at desktop traffic. So now I can filter even further. And I'm looking just at desktop traffic. And these are the campaigns that are associated with that. So I think you get the power of how this works. Now the question comes into how do I back out of all this stuff? Because that's the next question. Okay, I want to reset it. I want, now I want to look at Facebook traffic as a for instance. Um, you can do a couple different things. You can click the back arrow. Okay, and that is one way that you can do it. Um, another way that you can do it is sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. You can go like that. And then it did it reset. Or sometimes it'll get hung up, to be honest with you. I mean, the technology is technology and it can get hung up sometimes. If you ever have a problem, and you may have seen this in other videos, just click the reset button. It'll reset the whole thing. And then you just have to go up here and uh, populate or reselect your, your data source. Now, the other thing, and I'm going to reset this. Well, that's interesting. Now, the other thing that you can do, and you'll notice that these values in terms of these metrics are sorted um, right now hierarchically by revenue. So as a for instance, and just as a as a, a point of reference, we have this down carrot. OK, if I want to see, OK, I want to see everything uh, in terms of the highest average purchase revenue, because right now this is sorting based on the highest revenue. So we can see that the highest revenue was direct none, the second was Google Organic, and the third was Google CPC, as represented by these values. But let's just say I want to look at um, average purchase revenue. Oh. Okay, so you see that? I actually clicked on the wrong thing, so I'm going to reset it. Now I want to sort by average purchase revenue, greatest to lowest. So you'll see here, I clicked on that. We got the down carrot here. Click on transactions, highest e-commerce conversion rate, and the number of sessions. Same thing, reset it just like that. Um, so that's where we're at with just general functionality. Now, when we get into these other tables, I'll just do a quick roll through here. We have specific engagement metrics. Some of these are calculated fields, um, e-commerce conversion rate. Doesn't exist in GA4 as of the time of this, um, 
of this recording. I've created it in all of these tables for you. Uh, average engagement time. I th I'm pretty sure that's a, a, a calculated um, a calculated field. Let's um, and then sessions um, sessions per user as well. So we have these in terms of session source medium and session campaign. Same thing with first users in terms of KPIs and KPIs and engagement. Want to learn about what first what a first user is? Go right here. Uh, then we come down into the default channel groupings. And let me not forget the first users for engagement as well. So you can look and see um, how that's performing. And then we come into the default channel group for the K KPIs and we have uh, the same type of thing, but in terms of the default channel group, which comes out of the box of GA4. The, one other thing that I, I just kind of glossed over here quickly was if we look at, um, if we look at the engagement page for uh, here and here, you'll notice that these are heat mapped. So the reason that I included the heat map on these specific pages is because we have a lot of different metrics and I just thought it was would allow you to more quickly dial into uh, the, the higher values in terms of weight uh, visually as opposed to um, just trying to look at it and, and uh, calculate all these numbers in your brain. So you can just look at the colors and see very quickly right here that uh, direct none in terms of sessions has the highest level of, um, has the darkest color, which then would lead to the highest level of sessions. And let's just proof that out as well. So I sorted on that and yes, it is in fact the darkest and the greatest value. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions whatsoever on UTM parameters, how you can use them to your advantage to optimize your traffic, grow your revenue, uh, reduce expenses, make more profit exponentially, uh, just shoot me an email and uh, we can take it from there. Thanks very much for watching this video and happy optimizing.